So, hello, welcome to another Woodworking Wisdom. I was going to say good afternoon, but some of you, Laz down in Melbourne, it's evening. Okay, all right. So, look like we're all right after the problems we had yesterday. So, great. Okay, sorry about yesterday. A few technical hitches on the aspect they're live, but wouldn't actually allow us to go live. So, today, hopefully, we're all all right. So now, today, I'm going to get going with this, and then I'm going to go back and explain why we're doing this. So, at the moment, Craig, we go camera free for me. On here we've got plain spider. Now this is about winter tool prep, getting things ready for winter. Lads down in Melbourne, sorry, you're coming into summer, mate, but it'll be fine. This will be helpful. All right. My hand plane, number four, got a lot of rust on here. The spanner's got a lot of rust. Want to clean that up. Now, if you've got to this sort of state, we need to clean up. So I'm going to show you two or three ways, but simple one to start with. Something we haven't played with, but it'll take me about an hour bringing this into play. So Craig, probably just zip the camera too. Let's have a look on the front shot. So I've got a trough, the plane. There's all the rust. All on the front up through here. I'm going to put in now. I've stripped the plane down, taking it apart, taking the handles off. I don't want those in there. I've got in the bottom here, two little plastic strips. All right, a bit of plastic tube cut in half to suspend it up. I've got to use a plastic tub or a stainless steel one with this. Now I've got a water solution. I'm going to explain this in a second, but this takes about 45 minutes to an hour to work. So I need to get this in here. So I'm going to pour it in. A bit more. I want to get it all the way over. I'm going to put our spanner in as much as we can, see what we get. Oh, where are we? A little bit more. All right, we'll go with that. All right, so you can see what we've done. So I'm just going to grab that. Put the water solution that I don't want. Put it on the floor. We're just going to move this back out of the way. The reason we've got it on the tray, I can move it along, get that shot there. Now, hoping. Now I've moved it back. I'm not going to slosh it about anymore. Just top it up to get that plane covered. Good. Let's see. How about that? All right, okay, so now we've done the bit that I want to get it in solution, that's great. So what we're going to do today, winter tool prep. In reality, with winter coming, your hand tools or that valuable investment that you've got is at risk. All right, so you want to try and protect it, make things last. We spend all that time sharpening things, getting it looking, cutting well, send it up, and this month can ruin it over the winter period. So in reality, what can we do? If it's gone rusty, we can do what we've done with the trough. We can soak it. We're going to relieve it. So what we've done with the trough, we've got some water, which is what was that. I'm using this stuff. So I haven't used this before, so it's a bit of a play for me. It gets really good reviews on the website. So interesting for me, it is a restore rust remover. It restores steel and iron tools and components. It's non-acidic. It will only move the rust harmless to plastics, rubber, and non-ferrous metals and timber. But I took the knobs off because I don't want those in there. It will de-rust items and then protect against further corrosion, which I find amazing because you dilute it with water. Really? Okay. It's economical. The contents of this little bottle, 250 ml, will make five litres. So on my milk cart and I have a black line down here that told me that's 100 ml for my two litres. So, okay, I've worked out my percentage. Really easy to do. Put it in there, let it soak, we'll see what it does. So nice component to try and use to put in there, see if it's going to take the rust off. Just that surface area I want to clean up. All right. Notice that you want to try and protect your tools. As we kind of said, with winter coming, some of you, you might not go down to your workshops. Um, some of my friends in the States that I've met, got heated workshops? Oh, come on. Heated? I've got friends over here who've got wood burners, but central heating in your workshops pushing it. My wife will never go for it. So, rust. All right. It's the number one cause of problems. But what is rust? How do we get it? Well, in reality, you have three commodities will affect it. One, the actual material, iron or steel. It contains iron ore. All right. So, it will have that iron content. Second commodity, oxygen. We can't stop that one too easily. It's all around us. Third one, damp, moisture. You put the three together, you've already got one, but you've got your steel. Areas around you can't stop that very easily. And then you get a little bit of moisture, you can start to corrode things. So on a boat, 
beautiful example of something that will go totally rusty. We've all seen pictures of things that have gone rusty and you think, oh, wow. So we want to try and limit it. Stop that happening. Um, even my chip breaker on here, really good example. Look at this. Now, what happened here? Um, I hadn't noticed. I'd sprayed the water bottle with the water stones or the scary sharpening board, got an overspray, left it on the bench for a weekend. As simple as that, and it affected it. Got all that rust. We're going to clean that up. So I want to show you how we can clean it up and then go back to protect stuff. So it's quite an important part that we understand what's causing it. Next thing that can cause things, you've got the air, your water. If you live near the sea and you get a salty environment, that will affect it. So you get salt in the air. But also the fact, even if you don't live near the sea, and you've seen me the last few weeks make my table, got a bit warm and sweaty in here, pushing that hand plane back and forwards. My fingertips will have a salt residue that comes out. So even my fingertips get damp. All those things will transfer it to whatever you're holding. Now, don't go thinking about this just being a hand plane, a chisel, a spoke shave. Could be your cast iron router table, your wood lathe, your wood chuck. So all those things come into it. So I've even got center off of out of my stuff at home, okay? Now, it's amazing when we pick things up, we tend to hold it. The guy I worked with before I came here, he had a spotlessly clean combination machine until I worked there. And you get fingertip marks where I put my fingers on it to lean on the machine to set it up. Same one here. Got the grip marks where I've held this. Likewise, the collar comes off. I used to collar quite a bit. I've got quite a grubby area now. That could be a buildup of wax, moisture off my fingers, could be rust. Getting rust down inside here where the tip comes in and out. You can see the dark bit on the end, the sand. That will affect it. Now, if I leave the two together and don't do anything with it, I run the risk it's going to damage it. Likewise, the Morse taper is a really good example for you because if you get your Morse taper go rusty and it's in the lathe and you've got your, so you're damp, you put it into the lathe headstock or the tailstock, that will affect things as well. So you want to try and keep that to a minimal. Right, so that rust buildup can cause real problems. Got a beautiful little thing in here. Um, one of the guys upstairs collects old hand tools. So this is a block plane he's got. I was fascinated with this because this top surface, and this is how we got it. If I take this out, I'm going get it here. I think you can see all the rust on that side. That looks nice. If I flip it over, this side's not as rusty. And I kind of, why is that? It's how it's in that box. It's not getting the airflow around that back edge. It would have been on display on a shelf, probably facing wherever. So the open side is rusted more than the back edge. Still a little bit, but nowhere near as deep. I don't know if it really, I think it comes out in there. You can see the difference. So even how we store things can play a part in what's happening. So, all right, we've done the plane body. Go to one, Craig, go on, good. So we've done our plane body that's in here in the spanner. We're going to leave that for a bit of time to soak. Got a couple of others, and then we're going to go through things. So some of my planes from home. This is Veritas plane. We've got finger grips, tip marks. So these are probably finger marks where they're damp. Um, I use this quite a lot. I've just done things on my shed. I've done extensions to my wife's shed. So therefore, this gets outside, gets a bit damp. So I'm going to take the blade out for a minute. Can't take that out. How can we clean this up? What have we got? I'll put the plane down, turn the blade out. It's less components to rattle about. I'm going to use, and I'd like to say, we're going to show you two or three ways. This is a material called Merlon or Webrex, depending on your manufacturer. It's a synthetic steel wool. 360 grit, 1500 grit. Again, this can be used with something like a wax. I want to get rid of some of the fingertip marks on the outside edge of the plane across the bottom. So we're going to start with a 360 grit. We can rub it back and forwards. Already cleaning things up. Looks shiny. Woo! The other side. Now, as much as I said this is a winter tool care prep and about putting your tools away, getting them ready for winter, this is part of that. Because the longer we leave the rust on the surface, the deeper it will become. The deeper it becomes, the more problems we've actually got. So on here... We're just taking that surface rust off, cleaning up the bottom. I think that looks shiny already. So 360 grit, a bit coarser. 1500 grit, we'll refine things down. So 
a nice and clean area now. I have rush. Let's get rid of that a minute. Put it there. We've got the finger grips. They still look a bit dirty. I've got a smaller bit of the 1500 grip. Exactly the same way we can push it in there. So first thing we're going to do with this session really today, have a little bit of a cleanup session. One there. Get into there. I'm going to check just inside. Is there anything in here that can be worth dusting out the loose material? Plain shavings, dust. If you think about it now, most of us understand that timber dries. Timber is a sponge. It will absorb moisture back in as well as get rid of it as it dries. If you've got lots of sawdust inside the plain body, it will absorb that and cause more rust. So clean it out once in a while. All right, so we've cleaned up a little bit of test paint. Nice, clean and shiny. We've got a few things to do. Amazingly, where I'm touching it and holding it around, already getting little damp fingertips. And Craig can say, yeah, okay, a little bit there. If I rock it back and forth, see the mark down in here. That's my fingers, damp. So I'm going to protect that in a minute. I'll put it on the front. Let's do that. What can we do with that? That's a bit deeper. Didn't want to put it in the solution. So on here, we have, and I'll rub these on in a minute, just going to explain this. These are Garaflex blocks. A Garaflex block is a rubberized block with abrasive particles. So we've got a coarser one. This is a 240 grit, a lot finer. Okay, so we've got two grades. Craig, what have you got, mate? Good afternoon, everybody. So good to have you with us once again. Um, Jason, a quick question. It's a wood turning question from, from John. Um, what bevel angle does uh, do you recommend for a quarter inch and a three inch beading and parting tool? What? Sorry, what? What, what bevel angle? angle? Oh. In reality, now I'm going to put myself a line over there. Now. If you look at the face you're grinding on a beading tool like the three eighth and the quarter inch, where you actually get it up to that diamond point at the top, if you looked at the face you're grinding either side, I'd want it to be square. So in reality, you're hitting a 45 degree angle. All right, so a 45 degree angle set on your grinder to your wheel, or if you grind that face in the bevel you're actually grinding, I'd like it to be square. I know when they factory done, they can be too long, but what I want, that's just a personal thing. If you think about it too steep, you get a stronger edge, but difficult to control, it won't fit into the gap. Too long, it becomes very narrow and very weak. So 45 degree bevel seems to work nicely on what I've used them for. And I used them for fitting the box lids. So it cuts nicely on there. Hoping that helps you, okay? Put me right on the spot there. We're turning questions. What's going on? Okay. All right, so back to our Garifax block. So we said coarser one. Just going to turn this round. This will rub this off. And this is, like I said, the brazier particles. Um, we as a group in here where we've done the shows over 20 years, I've been here. Always had these in the toolbox. Really good for cleaning up machines, getting stuff looking nice and clean. And like I said, don't go thinking this is just about hand tools. This might be machine bed surfaces, your planer, your thicknesser. Definitely think like your cast iron router table, your bandsaw. Me and Craig have discussed trying to do something as a session, maybe on those as well, maintenance session to give you an idea what to do. So I'm going final block now. Coming across to the little lip in here, so I've got to pick it up just to get into there. And I can work different directions. I'm going to finish off going up and down it. Tiny bit back on the top, just checking I'm not putting my camera or my head in line with the overhead camera for you. Look all right, that's good. Look at that, how much better that is. Now if I'd left it, that rust will grow. We've cut it back, we're still going to protect it, we've still got jobs to do to it. But first thing is get rid of anything that's going to grow. So the gear reflex blocks works really nice. I'm going to use that again in a second. I'm going to give you a little bit of a story. I'm going to show you a plane. It's not the one involved. I'll give you an idea. So about three or four years ago, we had a guy send back a Lionelson number four or five plane. Can't remember which one exactly. It came back and we agreed, or I agreed, to refurnish it for him. And it came back and basically, having phoned him up, he stored it in a sock, which we're going to look at later. Help protect it, stop it getting knocked. But where he had it in his bench or on his workshop, he had a wooden pattern going across. And he sits the plane on it, like that. So it keeps the blade up off the surface. 
helps get a bit of air around it, not a problem. He had a leak in the shed roof and hadn't noticed. Well, the water's dripping down, hit the batten. The batten's like a sponge. It's, it's timber. It soaks the moisture back up. So actually, when I got the plane back, it had a band of rust running across the sole in one place only, where it had been in contact with the batten. Okay, not a problem. So I clean it all up. Webrex, Scaraflex block, get it looking really, really nice. I put some camellia oil on, which we're going to use later. I sat on the bench. The next day I came in, it's about to rest again. Hmm, okay. So what's going on? And I talked to a good friend we had at that point in here, a guy that used to do some engineering stuff with us, and asked him about this. Metal, if you looked at cast iron, is a structure, has lots of holes in it. If you could magnify it, it's not a solid thing. It has a grain, a pores, all right? So little cracks and defects that you can't see with your naked eye. That water got into there, gets into the metal. We're putting the camellia oil on. Yes, I've sealed the surface, but I've not got the water out. So if you've got something that gets really wet, put it on something heated, top of a radiator for a few days. Get it to dry out within the metal surface, then do the rust bit, okay? So hopefully that explained that one a little bit there. Craig. Yeah, I've got a question from Maria. She's got a record lathe with the, the, the steel bars. Round red bars, yep. They are, okay. but they're, they're chrome bars. Yep. Okay. So some of the chrome is chipped off. She cleans it up every now and again with red racks, but it, those chipped areas, sounds like it still kind of comes okay. through rusty. What can she do to help uh, help this situation? She doesn't really want to use wax because she struggles to slide her banjo okay. with a banjo wax builder. A couple of things you can do. Okay, now first of all, Maria, if you've got a chip in where the chrome section is and you want to move everything, it's going to catch it every time you... All right? First thing I do, and I used to have record light, all right? If you undo it, you could rotate the red bars around a bit, first of all, so you're not catching in that, that little chip or that dent. That's the first thing, so you're not going to. Then, obviously, make sure there's no rust on it. All right, the chroming will be put onto the surface to stop the rust. So ideally, if you've chipped it and you're getting rust marks in underneath, yes, you want to clean up that, or it's going to spread in underneath maybe the chrome layer, which we'll explain in a second. You could go with a number of things. You could go with wax. So we do a machine wax, which is for beds and stuff. You put it on, you buff it. So don't leave it as a soft paste wax all the way over it because that will that will attract, if you like, the wood dust. Other thing, oil is no good. WD-40, yeah, okay, you can put it on, but again, the oil will stick to. Grease is useless for that because, first of all, it's going to create a mess. Also goes hard with wood dust. Or something like the PFT spray, which is the dry PFT spray, all right? So you can spray this on. This will help things glide. So more of you on there, you could use a mixture you could do a layer of something like the machine wax and then the dry PFT spray. The dry PFT spray is also really good for your chuck for the same reason. If you put grease inside your chuck and it gets open to the elements of the wood dust, and us wood turners tend to put a lot of fine dust inside, and when you're doing your sanding, it will collect, it will go hard. So the PFT spray will be a better way of going, help protect it. It would also stop the moisture and the residue sticking. The PFT spray will also stop things like your paint and your lacquer. Your cellulose, sealer sticking to your bed bars. So hopefully that would help a lot more on that bit. Okay. So, all right, good question. All right. Like I said, this isn't just about hand tools. This is getting you to think about what you can do long term for your stuff. All right. So we've done, we said about the plane. We did finally manage to get his plane cleaned up. I put it on the radiator, dry that metal right out. And like I said, that got quite wet. If you get that deep rust, so Craig, can we have a look on number three for me? Let's just see what we've got on here. I think you can see the darker areas on here. This is an old chisel. We cleaned it up. But this had quite deep rust marks. So these little dark patches are where it's pitted into the surface deeper. The back, I really had to play with to get this back to a nice, flat, clean area without any rust marks in. Because the problem with those, they go in a long way. It can do a lot of damage. So try and get rid of it before it gets hold of is the major thing. So likewise, our hand plane thing is we can clean them up before it does any damage by putting them in the trough with the solution. Be interesting to see what happens. Other block plane. This has got fingertips, so we could do Garaflex block again. I need to make sure the blade's wound right back. This one also um, has some glue. All right. I know it's criminals. I know. 
all right so i've sanded stuff with a little bit of glue and it's stuck to the bottom now the problem is glue also contains water so need to get rid of it a bit i could go back and use the web racks with this if i wanted so the synthetic steel wool wouldn't hurt in a second some of this was a bit deeper rust wise than what i had on the other so i was more concerned Again, Garaflex would work. So, Maria, you said about your lay bed. If you've got somewhere where you get a bit of rust, this would be a good way of going. Don't go using normal abrasive paper. You tend to scratch things more. If you have machine bed, router table, bandsaw table, and you have an orbital sander, fine grade can be really good for that. That will help clean up. Something like a 400 grit, 240 grit, 400 will be really good to sand the surface lightly give you a nice pattern that looks uniform and then you can do what we're going to do in a sec Ugh. so this is just getting us back to oops turn that round i want to come that way i'm digging the corners and on the front the mouth where i've ticked the mouth back just do a little bit to go on this one try a bit in here but actually looks a lot shinier again so it's amazing how quick we can get it back to a manufactured state almost removing those little defects before they get hold other thing with this i'm keeping your second hand values high right they look good people will buy something that looks nice and new all right so we cleaned up most things let's just move our board and get rid of it put that down there all right This is the chisel we sharpened the other week. Nice sharp on this edge. Okay, we've got that shine. That was done that scary sharpening board. This is all pristine. Now, when these come into stock for us, they come in a cardboard box. It might have a plastic bag. That's it. So why doesn't it rust? Now, they also go out into the shops. They hang on the shelf. They coat these with a lacquer. And we had that just a discussion as part of that, actually, when we sharpened it. So we needed to cut through the lacquer now. At the moment, I've left most of the lacquer on here down through, apart from the bit we sharpened. So I've got to, that's my wrist bit, the front bit. Got to go careful. So what I'm getting over now is we might need to protect what you've got with something. All right, so that's thing. We have a number of different ones we can go with. We have a, I'm going to read the label. Go get the glasses again, though. So, uh, Protect Tool Wax Polish. It's a uh, protect steel and cast iron tools, hand planes, chisels, machining beds, and accessories from corrosion. All right, so unique formula uh, contains. I'm trying to make sure you get the, the right bits. All right, corrosion inhibitor doesn't contain silicons. That's important. If it contains silicons, when you put your polish onto your workpiece, if you've been using this on your plane and then you've planed a bit of wood, that gets onto your timber. You won't get finished to stick. So whatever you put on cannot contain silicates. All right. Craig, nearly done. Let me just do it. Um, this is a micro crystal type wax, but with basically a rust inhibitor on it. All right. The hand tool wax is very similar. Craig. Yeah, question for myself, I'm okay. afraid. Um, from Martin. Um, he's asked me if the bandsaw blade upgrade guides will fit the smaller ac 1400 bandsaw uh, i'm afraid not martin the bandsaw upgrade kits or the guide upgrade kits are, are far too big for that little bandsaw apologies thanks for the question okay great so i love all these questions coming on different subjects fantastic all right it just so a little bit on my plane so we've got two different waxes here they're, they're probably quite similar all right, so these are a micro crystal wax. They are non-petroleum based. The major thing with these is they have a rust inhibitor in them. You don't need a lot. Use sparingly though, so, okay? So we can push it on. Again, Maria, something like this. I'm gonna do another one in a minute. We've got machine wax in here. Um, I'll go through that in a second as well. So I can put the wax on. This is a bit like doing your shoes, isn't it? Okay, wipe it on. I can also, look at this look. Lovely colour coming off. If I can, do down inside here. Protect it. Try and stop the rust getting into those components as well. It will also help the blade glide forward and back. So really good little bit. So we wiped on. That's one. So that's made by the same people that are doing the solution. 
we have a little tin of hand tool work. This this has got a special label. This this says it's in here and it's my little tin because Craig will vouch for the fact that things go missing from the rooms. People borrow it. Okay. So easy to do as a wax. Now this is building up a small layer. All right. I need to do a little bit more on the base there, clean up, but this will stop things going rusty. We can build up a layer. As we say, it doesn't contain silicon, so it's not going to affect the timber. All right, all right, good. So both quite similar, different size little pots. One question I did get asked a while back, if you were going to do, where is it? Got one there. That one down this end. We've had a look already, haven't we? We've said to Maria about it. Okay. People said to me, is there a difference then between the hand tool wax and the machine bed wax? I had to do some research because it was one of those questions that kind of, that's quite interesting, is there? Because that's a big tin. This actually contains more of the component that helps things slide, move, glide across the surface. That's a bit cheaper. What's in here actually gets into the metal pores more and helps protect it and stop it going rusty. So hence the fact there's different tins. This one you're going to use more of because it's a bigger surface on your machine bed. This need a little bit, all right? So machine to wax and hand tool wax. Craig. Yeah, very good question from Bill. Would you recommend using those those uh, the web wax pads um, for cleaning up a bandsaw table? Yeah, you can do. Okay, definitely. Now, I said you if you have orbital sander, all right, we'd recommend using a pad protector in between, flat one, if they're Velcro. I get scissors. We cut this out. I've even put them on my orbital sander. So you can add them to things like that. They will stick onto the Velcro, but you want to make sure you use the same side down if you use it more than once, okay? Use it dry. Make sure you've got extraction. That's a must because the black dust that comes off of this is unbelievable. All right, Craig? Yeah, question here. Um, how long does that little pot of wax last you? You understand there's a lot of, um, you know, dependencies here, but... The little tub we do as a thing. I mean, this one I've had in here about two and a half years. I'm halfway through. Okay. Craig can see. All right. So I put a little bit on. Okay. I have other things we're going to use as well. So you, it's a case of use it sparingly. You don't need to put most of us when we dip it in. We'll put, ah, oh, that'll do. Get loads. Well, I haven't got a lot on here. Now, hopefully with my wax, this is a bit bigger. Similar sort of stuff. A bit, bit more money, I suppose. It's a bigger tub. Both will work nicely, okay? And if you're going to protect your hand tools, worth doing. So next thing with this, obviously, this also has something that will make things glide as well. It makes them shiny, okay? Look at that, all right? It will help protect it if you did. I'm not saying you've got to do it once a month. Depends on how much you use these. But put a little bit on. I can do a little bit inside there, clean up mechanism I did. I don't want too much wax in there, check and slide. But you can see how different that looks now. All right. Now, so you can put those out of the way. Put the wax up to there. Other thing I can use, I'm a real fan of things like Camilla roll. If I am sharpening with... And if most of you, Greg, let's have a look on frame. I think we can probably see that better. I'm trying to give you a better picture. Um, if I'm sharpening, most of you, if you think, if you watch the series they do on the sharpening stones, I'm not an oil phone stand, oil stone fan, sorry, because oil is messy. I'm really into water stones. Now, the problem with water stones or scary sharpening, they contain water. We say we don't want water. That's one of the ingredients that causes things to rust. So I've got to be a little bit careful. All right, Craig, calm them. What have you got? Yeah, Maria's asked, um, if rust on a tool has is, is got so bad that the surface is actually pitted, is there anything you can do about that? Does it matter? It's a lot of hard work. Um, depends on how deep the rusting's gone in and what it is. Something like the chisel that I showed you we were quite lucky with because most of the pitting was on the top. So we managed to take that out. I can't feel it. Underneath wasn't too bad. If you get lots of pitting into the surface of the cutting edge, oh, forget it. You could spend more time trying to do it than the tools actually worth. 
we had a guy come in ages ago who bought in a set of turning tools that had been left somewhere. They were carbon steel, not high speed. And where the tangs fitted the handle, it had rusted the ferrules out that were a steel ferrule. And also the tangs were rusty. And he said, can I use them? You've got to be joking. It's going to affect the structural strength of what you're doing. If it got to that state and you're getting that deep pitted rust, think carefully about what you're doing. Because actually the rust weakens steel. We all know things like concrete cancer, where basically the steel bar is rusting inside the, and it expands. It's amazing how much this can expand once it starts to rust. So think about that structural thing, quite an important part. So we said to pine blades, I've sharpened water stones. I will use the scary sharpening stuff, so I will actually use a water. So if I've got, and I've got different bottles in here. On here, this bottle actually has written on the top, it says home right, which is what's in here. Okay, that I use on the water stones and also the scary sharpening board because it has a rust inhibitor in it. So again, this is an additive that will go into you. What you're going to use, you can use actually with your things like your tool mech as well. So that'll help. Why do you want on your tool mech? Um, some of the older tool mechs didn't have, and I wouldn't have thought the cheaper copies of the tool mech have a stainless steel shaft. I wouldn't have thought so. Tool mech were the one that came out with stainless steel shaft. What's the issue with that? If the shaft goes rusty and you don't notice, wow, it's fun trying to get the wheel off. Craig sat here nodding. We've been there. We've actually had to break stones in half to take them off the shaft to put a new wheel on. Whereas if you add something as a rust inhibitor to the water you're using with it, it will help stop that corrosion. So likewise with water stones, with my scary sharpening, like using on their axes, an additive to stop things going rusty also means the blades don't go rusty. The camellia oil, the Japanese have used for centuries. So I have a little applicator. I can wipe it on my blade. Don't need loads, just enough. Done. It will leave a thin layer. It will dry back to a bit of a film. It will also sink into those metal particles, the open pore structure. Really important. Now, we've all seen pictures of samurai swords and now they come out looking really, really shiny. So it can be good to do. Let's just do in here, check this blade. And again, I like doing the aspect of wiping it on is more precise than spraying it everywhere. I do both sides of the blade and the blades are probably quite a priority. It will also, when I put the blade back in, put a thin layer of camellia oil underneath where the blade is and it sits in the frog or the frog section on that plane will allow that to create a little, little layer of oil, if you like. So as you wind the blade back and forth, it helps lubricate it. It's not affecting the wood dust or the wood surface, so it won't colour it. It's quite amazing. I found if I sprayed it on wood, it doesn't colour it. It's non-toxic. I didn't say you can drink it, but it's non-toxic. Can't cook with it. So definitely not though. All right. But it really does help protect. If you're going to spray it on stuff, you tend to end up with more. So the applicator is a good way of just wiping on a light like coat. All right. So come on, should all bits that that. I'll have my tub doing it. looks good. All right. So, so far, we've said about cleaning the surface up, getting back to a rust free area, getting rid of that stuff that's causing the damage. All right. Now, Maria, you said about chrome things on the bed bars of your life. Most of are chucks and now all stainless steel. The jewels are stainless steel. Why do we do that? We used to do, and the older chucks, if you have them, the K10, were a mild steel body. And then they'd go off to a chroming plant locally, somewhere we used to deal with, and they would chrome plate the surface. Now, the problem with that, from our point of view, it's inaccurate. Varies in thickness. So we then decided, could we make a chuck out of stainless steel? That doesn't corrode, has that advantage. Why does that matter in a woodworking environment or a wood turning environment? Some of you term wet wood. Oak's a really good example. It will corrode stuff overnight. I've left a hand plane on a bit of wet oak accidentally at home came back the next morning, it was black. And that takes a lot of cleaning out. So what can we do to protect stuff if you have it? Now, some tools come in, something as a package that helps protect it. What is this package trying to protect? In reality, the cutting edge. Or maybe you, if you want to phrase it like that, because these are pretty sharp. So our drawer knife has a leather case. All right, so we've got options here. We could, and this won't hurt, all right? Spray the lover, 
it looks a bit messy to start with. I want to get it down in there. What are we doing with this? We're creating a layer of oil. Why does that matter? It's a leather case. If you go for a walk in the rain, do your shoes, if they're leather, they repel the, the water for a, a period of time, don't they? If you wax them, better. Yeah, okay. But you still get the leather will pick up the moisture. So if this is just left in a damp workshop, it will absorb the moisture that's in the air. So in those month, winter months that are coming, it's going to pick up that damp. You've got whatever inside it, in this case, our draw knife, it's going to go rusty. So by spraying a layer of camellia oil in there, it's giving it something to protect it. It also gets into the leather. So every time we pick it in and out, it protects that draw knife, stops it going rusty. So simple little one for something like leather goods. And leather is quite an important part to get over that. It is a sponge. It absorbs moisture as much as it will protect things does need to protect it right what we got on our bench other tools i want to go through you my hand files working on trying to get a nice case for these these are how we've used them i got these out the other day and went oh wow look at all this so what's this craig come here number three look let's have a look up there all this wood dust look now this will be a pine or something that i've got a bit resinous it's stuck on there. So first thing we've got to do with your files, your rafts, you get a file card, which is a brush. You just, look at that, how easy, okay? Brush it out. We can do, because this is going to be easier, believe it or not, than trying to do a wax. So that's the camellia oil. We brush it on all the way down through. That will sink into the metal particles, dry to a, a film. All right? One done. Really easy. Find a hand for So the other one was a rough. This is definitely a foil. This is probably from when we did the demo with that earlier in the year. So I want to clean this right out. Red paint on this side. Nice and easy to do. So bring that up. So we've got a camellia roll. Brush it on. Like I said, with this, I know it's non-toxic. So touch it on my skin. It's not going to affect me too much. Isn't irritant. That looks better. Cleaned it nicely right out. It'll protect a layer. Stop it going rusty. How many of you picked up a hand file and it's really, really rusty can cause problems? So those are in there. And again, that's another important bit with those. I put those in some cardboard or some paper as a sleeve. It protects them. But cardboard and paper can still cause issues because that will absorb moisture. Cardboard's like timber. So try and think about creating a little bit of a barrier. We can coat it. So the camellia oil is the easiest thing for something like a file or a rust. Right, move them down to this end, back to our bench. We have a look at the file cleaner. Sorry, Craig, the file yeah, cleaner. Okay, okay. So Craig, cleaner. Craig wants to have a look at... This is a weird and wonderful thing. Some of you might or might not have seen these. What is this? It's like a wire brush. A lot thinner. So this is a card file. The teeth are also bent. Almost with a little bit of a right angle. They're spring-loaded. All right. Bit of a handle. Really good little tool. Cleans your files out. Look at this. Get rid of all that dust. Clean them out. It can be metal particles, aluminium or aluminium, depending where you're from. All right. The dust. Get rid of it. But such an easy thing to have, all right? I think these are stainless steel bristle from memory, all right? Craig's not in, Craig, Craig does have a good background in these because he's playing with hand files for years, I think, all right? So a real good piece of kit, all right? But so good for something like hand files. Just, you, know, you have a couple, clean them out. But then remember to do something as an oil or something to protect them. Get rid of that stuff that's building up. All right, one of my favorite things. Oh! Let's move aboard a minute. I want to get rid of that dust. Back to a nice clean surface with us. Cabinet scrapers. Now, we saw how easy in the year uh, is to sharpen these. I should have bought mine in because they're not this colour. They're brown and rusty. I kind of, hmm. So, these, when they come in, which are the rider ones, come in a plastic bag. This is a, I think it's classed as a cohort bag or something, which is an anti-rust bag. Right? But the problem I find with this is there's three. They don't quite fit in the bag without touching one another. I spent a lot of time to sharpen them. I want to keep them apart because I don't want to damage that bare edge. 
So we do do, this is a little wallet. So this is leather. And again, if I'm going to put them in here, I would spray them or wax them. So in this case, in fact, it's easier to do. I could probably go with wax. So we can wipe it on. All right. That'll protect the goods in there. We wipe that over. We've seen how easy that was to do earlier. I could do all three. I'm going to speed things up a bit. You want to give it a few minutes to dry. A bit like we've said, even with the wood turning wax, when you put things on, give it a bit of time to create a film. Then this case has separates. And these are plastic sleeves. All right. Quite thick, but you can put them in between. Now, on this one, I can go in between. There's one, two. You'd actually get four scrapers in there. I also like to put my burnisher in there because the chances are if you're looking for your cabinet scrapers, you're going to want your burnisher at the same time. So you keep it all together. All right. So carbide burnisher I can have in there, have the cabinet scrapers in. Again, looks after it. But remember, you might need to spray the, the leather, a little bit of camellia oil, just to help draw that in, to stop it acting like a sponge, create a bit of a barrier again. All right. Stop it rusting. So we can easily put three of those in there. That also separates them. You don't damage that cutting edge. You're keeping it nice and clean. All right. Put the lid back on the wax. Let me go hand chisel. Go on there in a minute. Let's just keep the bag. No hand chisel. Um, let's go with the one we got up on here. This is sharp. All right. Now, I did sharpening session yesterday, certain things with the scary sharp, and got a bit of paper and went, Phew! wow. So, in here, and I do have a lever roll that my mum made me years and years ago to take my turning tools in, and they started poking out the bottom. Why? Because they're too sharp. So, in here, you've got a lever roll. Now, lever rolls, as we've already said, will absorb moisture. So, you need to make sure that you're trying to keep things apart if you like so you can put camellia oil in it's sinking how about this though what is this um i'm gonna reach for it look it's no uh, milk carton easy to get for most of us so the reason i like doing this and my turning to a roll that i travel with is exactly this first thing i can do the chisel we know we can put a bit of wax on won't hurt you could do camellia oil either doesn't matter i can also do inside here a little bit of wax. I slide the cut oil on from the milk carton into there. I put my chisel, if I can open it up, inside it. What does that do? First of all, it stops the chisel poking at the end. Each time I get it in there, I know it's been protected with that wax that's around it. All right. It's keeping it away from the leather, which you've got to that absorbent thing. So that's quite an important part. Put the three together, really good. Other things, though, we've already said your workshops get damp. Move things about a bit. Off the table for a minute. So you get your chisels in there. You get your roll. You roll them up. If we're not going down to the workshop for a, a period of time, could you put them in their own environment? So a zip bag. Now, you could put some of your tools. And like I said, when I did the write-up for this as a, a video, some of you might hibernate your tools. So plastic bags can be really good. It creates its own environment. And again, it's something I do at home. You also get these things. So Craig, let's have a quick look. This is a VC emitter. So this is a vapor emitter. This will do two square feet. So you can put it inside a toolbox if you've got it, plastic box, whatever else. But actually, if you're putting tools into a bag and you keep them in a, a drawer unit or a, Put it in, having opened it up, seal it up. It'll help protect everything for that period of time. And you think, with your bags, you could put a series of chisels. You could, okay, getting the idea. Help try and protect it. Something like zip bags are a real good way of going. So we've got our chisel. We know we've got our wax. Helps protect stuff. All right. Likewise, got something very similar for hand saws. I love this. My saws float about in the bench. And they're now on a door unit I've made. So they hang up. But they're not silver. They're a tarnishy brown colour. All right. So this will fit in. Let me come over a bit. There you go. Look, Craig. So this has got separate layers inside this. So you can have three or four saws. Again, I would do a couple of wax. 
slide it on, put them in put them together, then put it in a bag to store it. So again, you're sealing it up from the atmosphere. All right. And if you have hand spare hand plane blades, where do and how can you store those? This is something I kind of have problems with again at home. I tend to wrap them in either a bit of cloth, a bit of towel, old drying up cloth. Not brilliant way to do it. Started looking the other week, um, and I've always known about these, but I didn't realize that we did these as a separate. So Veritas make this as a plane storage case. This is for the bevel up style planes. Bevel down style, so you're standing number four, five, six, seven. All right, you need to get the right width, but actually there is one box that will do a four up to a seven. It's longer, so your blade will go in. Only the blade will fit in. You'd have to take the chip breaker off, but if you have spare blades, you've only got it on there. This also has inside the box a little cardboard bit, which doesn't look like anything, right? Let's have a look on free for me. This is another VC emitter thing. So this is about trying to stop the rust. It puts out a vapor to reduce that rust buildup, cut it down. Um, and people say, how can you have a vapor thing that gets rid it's all to do with, and there's the electromagnetic things you can protect steel with as well. So there's lots of different ways you can do it. But the VC emitter is actually stopping that oxidization between the air and the steel particles. So it helps reduce that initial rust bit. So they're a good way of sealing things up, getting them out of the air, but also, again, protecting them so you don't damage the edge. Craig. Jay Spiller's asked, uh, do those little bags that you get with something in the post, you know, those little... Uh... Yeah, do they do the similar sort of thing as the VC emitters? You know, the, the little bags that you get, the discount bags? So, silicon gel. Okay. Um, ben threw this at me yesterday, and I don't know why. That's a fantastic thing trying to find. Now, I've got some bigger ones we do with machines. They will work good. So, silicon gel will work as long as it's dry. Only has a certain shelf life, because if you start getting it wet, can cause problems, right? but try and keep it dry. But yes, they will work. You could put those in with your plastic bags or your tools in. Fantastic way of doing it. Of the weird and wonderful one, dried rice. You could put a little bag, and if any of you are into sewing up little cotton bags, you could put some dried rice in a cotton bag, sew it up, put it in with your tools. That will help absorb the moisture out of the air at the same time. So that's an easy one, isn't it? Cheap. Okay. Money saving tips on woodworking wisdom now. Okay, so could be a good way of doing. So VC emitters actually put out something as a thing. Silicon gel, yes, will absorb moisture. Thank you. All right, it's a good reminder. But like I say, even something like rice can be good. Now we've looked at lots of different storage things there. Got one other. My block plants. All right, plain sock. Um, these again have. Something, and it depends on the make, they do do a silicon protector. I don't really know how they do it, but it's in amongst the cotton bag. I'd also do a bit of camellia. I've turned it inside out, put it back around, put my strain in there. And again, this is about trying to stop the knocks and the dents. I can tie it up, tie it there. Now, these live in my little shelf unit out the way. It's not a normal sock. No, Craig, I'm sorry. All right. Not a Christmas stocking either, is it? Okay. Um, Dancers with Aardvarks has asked, would the crystals out of the disposable nappy work? I don't know. Probably. Sounds about right. Uh, there's no more nappies. I mean, I've seen the ember. It's a... All right, but okay. Um, they probably would. I don't. I, I don't have kids. So I'm sorry. So I don't. I, but it's the same sort of thing. Yes, it's absorbing moisture. So again, but you'd need somebody to put them in. You're going to be embarrassed if you're down the workshop. You had to get your tools out and get the bag of nappies out. And okay, wrap it inside the nappy. That could be it. Okay, all right. Put your chuck in the nappy. Craig, what do you know? Okay, all right. So we're up to there. We've got lots of things we said about the plane sock, storage wise, done the saws, done the chisels. The plastic thing inside the chisels is good. I'm going to look at there in a minute. So, okay, move things around the bench a bit. Put the lid back on the wax. Chip breaker looks good now. I'm going to move. I'll leave it. Ah, get rid of it. Go on. Bring them back. Again, a lot of stuff just to move about a little bit. Because I want to move the tray down now. Okay. 
Now, the liquid we've got in here, we said about, and the, the guys that would have joined maybe midway, midway through. Let's just have a quick look on my tray. I'm going to bring that up a little bit more. Try and get it into the camera shot for you guys. So this is a Restore Rust Remover. It removes rust from tall steel, so iron steel. It's non-acidic. That's important. Um, we've already said about if you live near the sea or the coast, salt water will affect things more. Salt water in your hands will affect it. So salt, if you're sweating, will affect the tools. So acidic stuff isn't good. It will cause more problems. Um, Debrust items protects against further corrosion. Now, if you've got something that's heavily corroded, they reckon you can do two or three times on this. It is water-based. They reckon once you finish using it, and it will go a black colour once it's finished using. So I could reuse this. It looks all right. Putting the gloves on, they recommend you have it hang on wires. You don't have to have gloves, but I've got delicate skin. Look. Now, I don't know about you. I'm my way, Craig. Let me just do. All right. Now, this I'm meant to do under running water. Oh, there's a tap. I'm just wiping it over a bit of cloth a minute. And they do say you need to scrub it a little bit. Safety glasses, if you're going to use a brush or anything, would be really good for this. I've got some normal water just in a spray bottle. Again, wipe over. Just going to rinse off. And like I said, they recommend doing this under the tap so you rinse it off. But actually, if you go back to where we started this video later, wow, that's totally different. They reckon you can scrub this back a bit more. Let's have a look at our spanner. No, this isn't the one that Colwyn had yesterday, I promise you, okay? Look at that. And you think about it, I've done nothing to that apart from put it in a tub of water, no frills. Look at this end. Wow. Quite impressed by that. Uh, for the, 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 the older guy, this is an Austin 7 spanner. I couldn't see that before we came in. Wow. All right. Um, if anyone wants, it's 3 quarter and 5 eighths. I don't know if it's a rare one. We'll have a look on eBay later. Look, okay. So you can see how easy that was to have. Now, this is still really clear as a water, so I could actually put more stuff in, reuse it. Once it goes really black, they then reckon you can fry it down the drain, and rinse it away, which I kind of, wow. So it's actually got to be, it's biodegradable. It breaks down naturally. Great. What more could you want? So simple way of cleaning up and getting that. This is already starting to dry. Once you've done it, they say you can put another layer, of dip it and let it hang it up to dry. And then that actually has a rust inhibitor built in that will stop that going really rusty again, which is all right. Craig. Bill's asked, uh, what about a, a dehumidifier in the workshop? You've got to run it the whole time. All right. And your dehumidifier is going to do this bit, isn't it? Now, I've got my drawers down here in the, in the workshop. The plywood will absorb moisture. It gets damp a little bit. Your tools are set against it. They're getting damp. Your dehumidifier will get rid of some of that. Yes, it will probably work. But it tends to clear the, if in reality, the flowing air, if you like, the stuff that moves. I'm not sure how it's going to get in an area where it's a bit trapped and you're getting that damp sticking. So that's something to think about. Yes, a dehumidifier will work to a certain degree. All right? But try and give it a, a bit more of a help would be good. Even something as simple as the zip bags and you know, seal it in its own little atmosphere. The leather case helps protect stuff. All those little things play a part. I'm quite impressed by that. That looks really good as a back to clean steel. Wow. Right, okay. And like I said, this isn't just about your hand tools. It could be your wood lathe accessories. It could be your pan saw stuff. Some of you have kind of said, you know, can I clean my table? Yeah, you can. So we can actually clean the table. It's all right. We think we're just, oh, okay, good. Thanks, Mike. All right. So cameras in here we have to jump on every 20 minutes to make sure they stay on so okay so machine wax can be really good for bandsaw tables and everything else it will help stuff glide definitely you're playing the thickness there machine wax on that bed will help it will stop it rusting help things glide through that surface and on the thickness side 
if it helps it glide through, that's great. Other thing, if the moisture is in the timber, so some of you play with some oak or whatever, that can really affect the machine bed. By putting a protection layer on, great to do as well. Stop that going rusty or even turning it black. All right, okay, let's have a quick look at the last one, which we said about earlier, really. Some things like the PFT spray. So chucks, lay beds, where you don't want something as a sticky layer can be really good. We use that occasionally on the planer as well. But definitely on the line bed, on the chucks, because you don't need anything sticking to it. Wood dust is a pain, especially on the wood turning side. So you can clean the jaws or take your jaws out, clean the slides, put a layer of that on. If you've got the open back 100 mil chuck with the teeth that you can see, brush the teeth off, give it a spray with that, would be really good as well. Okay, Craig, you got any more questions? All right, good. Oh, okay, right, just have a quick recap. I think I've got everything that I'm going through. Hopefully, it's been helpful. Get you thinking about what you're doing with your tools. Before you just leave your workshop and shut your door for the winter session, some of you might not be going down there. Try and protect those hand tools. You've invested in them, you've sharpened them. Be ashamed to come back when you open it back up. When, when is that, July next year? And then start again. Clear the rust up. Do a little bit of work now. Maybe you'll get better results. So tomorrow, Ben's back in doing a scroll for scroll, scroll saw project from memory. We hope to see you then. Hope you've enjoyed this. Share it with your friends. Give us the thumb up. Thank you very much. Goodbye.